My name is Carson. Welcome back to Thrifty Garage, a channel where we do everyday repairs, how to's, and reviews. And in today's video, we're gonna load up this Bobcat U35 on our Diamond Sea equipment trailer here. I'm gonna show you how I do it, and let's get to it. Okay, as you can see, we're already hooked up. I think my camera was not recording when I did my first segment. So basically, how we load up the, the equipment in the trailer, we uh, start our equipment, drive the machine on the ramps, get it up here on the trailer, and once we're on the trailer, we wanna make sure our load is centered, and we wanna have about 60% of our weight forward of the axles and about 40% behind the axles. We'll show you a side view of what that looks like. And then we uh, obviously dry the equipment on the, the ramp, set her down. We've got our uh, a backfill blade right there, set it down on the deck. And then uh, we can uh, move to the next step and we'll start chaining this down. Now I'm not gonna share information on the chain size that you need for your particular equipment size as well as the DOT regulations, um, but I will show you how I'm gonna be chaining this up. So up front here, we've got a, a chain, a short chain and a chain binder. And we're gonna go from our stake pocket up to this hook right here. We're gonna do the same thing on both front sides. You could also go um, up through here and across the push blade and over to the other side. Um, over here on the bucket, we will be doing a strap up and over um, from stake pocket to stake pocket. And then on the back side, we will run a chain through each of these D-rings and up through the hook underneath there. There is also a hook right here on the side where if you wanted to do four, you could do four, um, one on each corner. For me, I found it works best to go the chain down through the ding ring and across, and that just puts less pressure on this deck. There is some downward force here that does put some tension on that deck board. Now I wouldn't recommend these lever binders uh, for any novice users, but I also wouldn't recommend um, chaining down equipment for somebody novice too. So know what you're doing. Um, if you're gonna use this type, know the dangers involved with it. Um, I like using this type, I can get it, everything down really tight. And a big thing I use is a cheater pipe and make sure I'm not in the front half of this direction. Now we need to strap down these buckets. One disadvantage to using straps is if there's any damage, nicks or tears, you have to throw it away. You might get a pass if you're tying down something light, but if you're tying down something heavy, you might be in some in for a treat from the Highway Patrol. And when I tighten down these straps, I always get them as tight as possible. And the way these work is you actually need to have a few windings on there for it to have some tension. So I'll loosen it back up. And that'll give you a wrap in here. You don't want too many wraps. You just want enough to build some tension. Okay, and this is too long. That will drag on the ground. So we've got 
a lot of truckers use this. I'm not going to show you how, um, but I'm just going to tighten this down. So we just have a shorter tail. There's lots of videos on YouTube of how to do this. So go ahead and search that if you want to. Got this guy tight. Yeah, she, she sings. Not so tight. Well, this one's pretty tight too. Yeah, these are uh, nice and heavy duty. No slack, not going anywhere. Okay, so we're all strapped down. We got one chain binder on the rear, one long chain, a chain binder on each side, two short chains. Again, you can do this with a long chain. It's just easier to move around these shorter chains. With a skid steer, I do a long chain on the back, a long chain on the front. It just works out well. And I've got my straps on my implements as well as holding down the uh, arm on the excavator. Any, any implements like this always need to be tied down. Again, I'm not gonna say that this is gonna pass DOT. I'm not saying uh, this is the correct way to do it as far as chain setup or all that. This is simply how I do it. So here we've got the center line of the axles, basically where that parking line is. And we wanna have 40% of our weight back here and we want 60% of our weight up here. So right now we're pretty even split. And when you add the weight of the extra buckets and attachments up here, we should have the majority of the weight pushing forward on that gooseneck, which ultimately is putting some weight on the rear axle here, which uh, gives us a good towing experience. And uh, before we forget, let's pull up this jack. Well, there you go. That's how I chain down my equipment. Uh, leave any comments or feedbacks if I'm doing it wrong. I'm always looking for ways to improve. Um, one thing, uh, these uh, chain binders, these uh, lever levers, there's lots of other options, a little more expensive on the market that are a lot easier to use, a lot uh, less dangerous. But like I said, it works for me. It's quick, it's easy, convenient, and uh, I'm doing it, and I feel confident in doing that. Um, we're getting ready. We got the 2002 Chevy truck hooked up. We're getting ready to do a towing test between the three trucks. We got three work trucks. We got a 2002 $5,000 truck. We got a 2007 uh, Duramax diesel $15,000 truck. And then we've got a 2015 um, uh, Chevy 6.0 gas truck for $30,000. Uh, we're gonna get ready to do a towing test video on it, get a mileage uh, MPG loop on that. So uh, be sure and uh, subscribe to the channel and check out the other video. And thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one. 25.9 divided by 3.841 equals 6.74 miles per gallon.